So before we get started with this video, I want to touch on a few points first before you go ahead. USB burning tool is a tool we use for analogic devices and how to recover them. Now if you've not used USB burning tool yet on your brick device, then I strongly recommend you try it first. I've got a link in the description as well as above on where to find a good tutorial on using USB burning tool. Now, as well as this, if your box is actually booting and putting an output through the HDMI cable and you're actually getting something on screen, maybe it's something as simple as just maybe the actual boot logo, maybe you're just stuck in a boot loop, or maybe you're just going straight to a recovery menu, your box is far from broken and you can easily recover it using a simple, maybe a factory reset using a recovery menu. You can use that as well to install new firmware. Or you can simply wipe the catch and sometimes that works as well. This video is not for you and your box has still got a good chance of being recovered and working normally very quickly. This video is aimed at those people but their box is pretty much dead. Now when I say dead I don't mean the hardware is broken. Now a good indicator of hardware damage is where on the board it's maybe got a black burn mark somewhere. Maybe you've seen it actually not so much blow up but a puff of smoke maybe popped out of it that's a good indicator that the hardware's horribly failed and your box is far from repairable and you might as well chuck it in the bin now and go and grab another one however if this hasn't happened and you're still getting some sort of life out of it such as a, an led lighting up maybe a blue or red one then you've got a good chance of actually recovering it as well as that maybe it's not even outputting anything on the screen and your TV's not be able to pick it up. Maybe you've even tried using USB burning tool and the USB burning tool cannot pick up your box. Now still, this video might be able to help you and recover your device. So let's move on to the first part of this video. Boo card maker. What is it and how is it going to fix your Amlogic Android TV box? So it's a tool a bit like USB burning tool. However, we're actually going to burn the image that we would normally use with USB burning tool and burn it onto an SD card and transfer it over onto our box and then boot the operating system using our SD card and installing it directly onto our box rather than connecting our Android TV box to our computer and use an USB burning tool to burn the image onto it. So it's a very straightforward process. All we need to do is download Boot Card Maker. We need to locate the image file that's specific to your piece of Amlogic Android TV box hardware and then burn the image onto the SD card using Boot Card Maker. Now, there is another procedure after this that you may or may not have to do. This is called shorting the pins on your NAND flash. Now, you might not need to do this and you might just get away with actually inserting the SD card into your TV box and simply turning it on and it might just initiate the installation procedure straight away. However, it might not. But throughout this tutorial, I'll get onto that and I'll show you exactly what I mean and what to do. So, let's move on now. Let's get this started with this tutorial and let me show you how to burn your image file using Boot Card Maker onto an SD card. So let's load up Boot Card Maker. I'll leave the link in the description where to find this. It's a very simple program and it should run on most Windows computers. However, you might find Windows 10, you might have a few problems, I don't know. I know Windows 10 struggles with certain analogic programs. So if you can, try and find a machine with Windows 7 on it. So load it up, select at the top, just as shown, where your SD card is. Obviously, this is a good chance to actually insert an SD card. Make sure your SD card is suitable for your device. So if it's a micro SD card slot, make sure you've got a micro SD card. If it's a full-size SD card, like on an MXQ box, an old one, then you would obviously want a full-sized SD card. An SD card adapter will do just fine as well if you've just got a small one, but you've only got a port that takes a full-size one. It's absolutely fine doesn't really matter just make sure that you can insert when you've got the right SD card for your device inserted into your computer next thing you need to do is obviously you need to find the right image file for your device 
this is something we can't really help you with, although we might have some firmware on the website available for your device. Otherwise, Google is your best friend. Lots of firmware available by simply searching for it. FreeTab is a good place to research and find some good new firmware. Lots of developers on FreeTab always making really good firmware improvements over the stock one. As well as that, we always go to gadgets, China Gadgets Review even, and we always find there's a good selection of firmware available on that. It's a sort of a blog, sort of a WordPress website. And again, it normally comes up on Google and it's very straightforward. Just download it and then you get your image file. So once you've got your image file, all you need to do is select it as shown and then press make. It'll only take a couple of minutes to actually burn the image file onto an SD card. Once that's done, and that's pretty much it. You can move over to your TV now, insert the SD card into your box, and then apply power. Now, there is another step to this, but most cases, the boot card maker burnt image onto your SD card should initiate the recovery process, and on screen you should get some sort of recovery, and then the installation of the Android firmware. Just leave it and let it do its job and eventually it will restart and that's it, your box is now recovered. You might also need to hold in your AV reset button before you apply power. So insert your SD card with your image that you've just burnt using Boot Card Maker and then before you apply power hold in your AV reset button. Now we call it an AV reset button because most of the time there's a little button hid deep inside your AV port and then you hold that in and then it normally allows you to get the, to the recovery menu or tells the hardware to look at the SD card tray. Now this isn't always the case but you can certainly try it to see if it works for you. Now there's these reset buttons located in all sorts of different places. For example on this M8S we're working on in this video the AV reset button is located underneath. Now in MXQ, it's located in the AV port, MXQ Pro, again, AV port, and some of them are located on the side of the devices and varying ways. Basically, you need to locate that AV reset button, and if you don't have one, then the next part of the tutorial is going to be really important for you. As well as that, if you can't get it to boot using this way, holding in the reset button, or it doesn't boot without it, just applying power, then again, the next part of the tutorial will help you a great deal. So, let's move on now to the second part where I'm going to be showing you the basic principle behind shorting out pins on your NAND flash. You're going to have to dismantle your TV box. It's usually very simple to do this. Just on the back of your box you should have, normally in most cases anyway, you should have four rubber sort of anti-slip sort of things on the back of it as you can see on screen. Remove them and underneath them they've got screw screws. Unscrew them and then gently pry your box apart. Just be careful because your Wi-Fi antenna is normally stuck to the top part of your box inside. And if you too quickly, if you remove it too quickly, then what can happen is you can damage your Wi-Fi cable and you don't want to do that. So just take it nice and slowly, be patient and just take your time. So once you've taken your box apart, like shown, this is the M8S Pro by the way. And if you've got an M8S Pro, you can kind of follow this guide more closely. So take your box apart. And what you need to do is we need to locate your NAND flash chip. Now, at this point, your box is probably dead. Uh, so to be fair, you've probably not got a lot to lose in terms of damaging it even further. So my opinion, just carry on. Just try your best and let's see what we can do with your device. So let's locate that NAND flash. So normally it's just a big black blob somewhere on your motherboard. Basically NAND flash is just your storage. That's where the operating system sits in and that's where basically how the hardware works. So if you locate that you'll see on the side of your NAND flash you'll see a whole load of pins. You might need to look up nice and closely because they are quite small. And what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to find two pins on there next to each other. And what we want to do is basically short them out. We can use a piece of metal to do that, maybe a screwdriver or something like that. And we can just put it in between them both. So they actually kind of touching each other, shorting them out, so to, so to speak. 
on this MHS Pro, as you can see, I'm going to shout out these two pins. Now, this is specific to this board. It will be different for your device if you've not got an MHS Pro. And it will be a case of moving through the pins until we find the right ones. And the only way we're going to find the right ones is, first, obviously, have your SD card inserted with that image we've just burnt using Boot Card Maker. Get your power supply ready to be inserted. And then, as shown, slowly try each combination of pins so start at the top as shown and then move through them and eventually you will find one that initiates the hardware which allows the hardware to talk to the SD card tray and then initiate the boot sequence and then hopefully on screen you shall see something like this as you see I didn't get a chance to actually record it properly and but this is basically a recovery menu and it's starting the installation of Android so basically shorting out these two pins is basically similar to doing holding in the AV reset button but because there's so many issues on our board but this is the only way that we can actually do that. So again before you apply the power hold down two pins and then apply power and just keep repeating the process until you get some results until you see something on screen. Sometimes the screen will flash green or red or something like that. Now that means that you've got the right pins, but you've got the wrong firmware. So if that's the case, then you need to go back to your computer. You need to find a different image file for your device. Make sure it's specific to your hardware. Maybe even contact the manufacturer, contact your supplier, or just have a good look around on FreakTab. You can even comment in the comment section below and I'll maybe be able to help you. I'll maybe be able to find you some firmware from somewhere, but you can try. Obviously it has to be an image file. You cannot find a zip file because it does not work like that. A zip file is for a different installation procedure. You need an image file that would normally be used with USB burning tool. However, we're using it with Boot Card Maker and doing it this way. So again, once you found your image, right image file, again, burn it onto an SD card, go over to your TV, Locate the right pins. Hopefully you found it by now. And again, if you've got that green screen, again, you're going to have to repeat the process. And hopefully, eventually, you'll find the right firmware combination. And you'll find the right pins to actually short out. And once you've done that, hopefully everything works properly. Do let me know in the comment section below if you were successful with this. I will be interested to find out. And there we have it. I think that pretty much concludes this video. I really hope this video has somewhat helped towards recovering your Amlogic device. You can let me know in the comment section below if A, you were successful, either which way, whether you shorted out the pins or you didn't have to, or if you need a little bit further help, maybe need some firmware or something like that, and hopefully, you know, I can come up with something for you. I'll certainly try my best at least. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to check us out on Twitter, at MXQ Project, as well as at our website, mxqproject.com tutorials, reviews, etc. on there, as well as that come out to the Facebook group, lovely, lovely bunch of people over there, and yeah, thanks for watching, and we shall see you in the next one.